here is drawn out here you see we have a circle with a cross in it we have a British looking cross here and we have the Alwyn sign in dots on the stone here's the actual piece and you'll notice that the the uh, cross is entirely surrounded uh, by the circle and that's the way it was back in the fourth fifth century in fact these are in the graveyards over there and you'll see how the cross got away and came out beyond about 700 there's a fourth fifth and 700 cross so we kind of got a peg on when these people came here it is in, in a mound down in, in uh, Georgia <clears throat> in a hand which is also a symbol we don't have time to go into this is a beautiful thing that was found also by Webb in 1939 at the Hardin Village site again a Celtic cross if you will if you look closely there is a second ring here that goes all the way around it's been chipped off there's also three chevrons on all of these chevrons here and there's an alphabet up here a little strange for Indians to independently invent something like this on this continent but when we looked at the <clears throat> at the family crest of all of the kings of Britain here are all of the 12 tribes amazing how this got into the culture of the British people but you also see that the kings of Glamorgan were in fact chevrons neat then we find up the river some banner stones some kind of something we don't know exactly what they are but here you've got the three chevrons again some going up some going down here's another piece in the home of the sheriff chief of police up there and uh, amazing but there's an EA and I told you before that's their God it's Ea came to earth in an egg half fish half man that's what was on they found armor plating at the falls of the Ohio they said there was a harp and a mermaid it wasn't a mermaid it was a fish God and it was the Chaldean God that came out got into some of the Hebrew stuff this is also in his collection that is an A and that is an E. There's other letters on it. We didn't even see it until we photographed it and blew it up. It's in, the, uh, in his home up there. Absolute, absolutely authentic because I'm the first one that knew about this alphabet. This is also in the chief's uh, collection. I plopped this on the <clears throat> table at the British Museum and asked the archaeologist, Dr. Youngs, I said, what does that look like to you? We're finding things like this over in Kentucky. And she looked at that and she says, yeah I think that's a distributor <laughs> so anyway here's uh, here's what we find this is eastern Kentucky and uh, <clears throat> if you go up the Ohio River you'll see up here there's there was writing up here you saw the crosses and the letters we found here at Charleston writing writing at Brandenburg then mummies found and in these three locations those mummies had cloth and deerskin wrappers writing found here and there's other writing all around this area in Sneedville there were Melungeons okay they Sneedville in this whole valley area and then 26 miles away at Bat Creek there was some writing which you'll see in a little bit this is what a Melungeon looked like in 1820 they were white they tried to keep them from voting by telling them that they were Indian or that they were black couldn't do it but they did say that they were Christian okay this is a a five-factor blood study done by Tennessee anthropologists in spring of 1990 <clears throat> and you'll notice that the correlation in the blood factors with the Melungeons is Libya Canary Islands Portugal that's the Iberian Peninsula Italy Cyprus Spain Wales is a close hit but the American Indians appear to be the complete opposite blood factors the Melungeons do not appear to be American Indian. Now, Prehistoric Men of Kentucky, written by Colonel Bennett Young, Wilson Club, 1910, and talks about uh, finding in 1776, now that's three years before the first log cabin was built in Lexington, finding some mummies in a cave, and they were processed by some town. This was not reported by Raffinesque, but Raffinesque, our first uh, professor of history, uh, at the uh, at Transylvania College reported all the other mummies and 
In Scotland, in the archives of Scotland, is this letter. It goes back to 1815 by a Dr. Mitchell, written to the Earl of Buchan, and he talks about these mummies found at two different locations, and sure enough, when we went back, we compared this letter to the actual newspaper articles, and they were absolutely correct all the way. They did have, they did have deer skins wrapped around them. They did have a cloth. They, uh, the skin looked like dried bacon. Up here, one of them had a fine linen shirt on. Amazing. Indians in fine linen shirts. Should have been a dead giveaway. Wasn't. Okay, these are the mummies then that came out of Kentucky. The first a short cave that's about eight miles out of uh, Mammoth Cave. All those mummies are gone except for Fawn Hoof. Fawn Hoof is in the Smithsonian Institute. We have a request working for a year now for DNA and for carbon dating honor. Uh, Scudder's mummy. Oh, here's a, here's a, here's a dead giveaway. Uh, one of the mummies that showed up in the literature, 1835, uh, where this was uh, <clears throat> written by Josiah Priest, and it says that the mummy down in Florida had an alphabet on it that looked exactly like the letters that they had seen in the in the British Isles on metal. Now, if they had followed this clue up, it would have made all of our research redundant because here's the clue that would have given it all away. And again, cloth manufactured from the bark of trees. This is Scudder's mummy, went to Scudder's Museum and was burned up in P.T. Barnum's Circus about 20 years later. It's gone, but Raff and S. do this and it would make a good book cover. This is Fawn Hoof's skull it's in the smithsonian institute we did a craniometric examination because american indians have three plates three sutures and three inca bones they call them and those inca bones differentiate all those people that came across the bering strait mongolian bloodline with the caucasian well she didn't have those those bones but they said oh well we found a lot of these too so that doesn't mean anything we were looking particularly at the teeth because the teeth would have large pulp chambers. All the Asian people have large pulp chambers. But unfortunately, the front teeth, which would have been shoveled if they had been American Indian, scooped out, if you feel back in there, they were missing. They were on this mummy when she went up there because we've got the writing. They were intact and in good shape, but those are the first teeth that go that only have one root. Anyway, there she is, and we hope to get a carbon dating on her. There's enough tissue. This is the turn of the century, a photograph of her named Fawn Hoof because of the little hooves that she had around her neck. Then we sent some of the messages over to Wales and in, in hoping that if the Welsh-speaking Indians had an alphabet that we could identify some of the things that we found in Kentucky that had writing on them. And Alan Wilson did that and Alan Wilson will now come up and tell us. Well, there's his book, <laughs> incidentally. We've got five or six copies that somebody mm -hmm. is interested. Thank you. Thoroughly mechanized, am I? Um, what do I do with this? Is that backwards? That, that, it's got my... Uh, I don't know. I've got two hands. Uh, I'm going to start off by going in the wrong direction. But bear with me because it may fail. Uh, I started looking at the history of Southeast Wales about 35 years ago in the hobby. And my reason for starting to look at it was that I didn't believe a damn thing I was called in school. Uh, you must have turned it on. Well, you okay? Thank you. All right, I'll start again. I, I looked at the history of Southeast Wales, and I started looking at it casually as a hobby, you know, things to do on a winter weekend and so on, because I didn't believe anything I'd ever been told about it in school. Uh, it's a neglected area, a neglected subject, and I've later found out that it's a, it's a forbidden subject. One does not look into the history of Southeast Wales. It's very strange because it's the best 